Let's continue our math review. Go on to shape faces in equal parts. Now this will be a part on your test. Um, remember if we have a column A and a column B and it says match the shape with the face. Now which shape can go with a face in column B? Draw a line. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line. Well, do any of these shapes have a circle other than the first one? No. So the circle must go to our cylinder here, okay? So the circle goes to the cylinder because it's the only shape that actually has a circle as a face. Now let's take a look at this long rectangle, okay? A long rectangle. We have two shapes left. These are 3D shapes. Now face are the sides. The sides are these faces. So can this shape go into here? Hmm. No, it could not, could it? This shape is way too big to be a face on this one. What about this shape? Can our rectangle be a shape for this rectangular prism here? I agree, look. See how these faces match? So this shape could be a face on this rectangular prism. Now, our square. Where should our square go? Well, we really only have one left. So we should have a process of elimination. We know where the square goes. It goes in the cube. Now, could a square also go into a rectangular prism? Yes, it could. But if we said the square went into the rectangular prism, we know that the rectangular or the rectangle couldn't go into the uh, cube. So this gets a little bit tricky. Sometimes you have to find the best answer. All right. So now let's move on to equal parts. Shapes and faces can have a part in equal parts, and this will all connect with the last example I do with equal parts. Okay. So for the first thing with equal parts, remember we need to have pieces of a whole that make up the entire whole. And they have to be equal. So let's take a look at these, this shape right here. This is a whole square, but it's cut into how many parts? Four parts. One, two, three, four. So if we were to write a fraction for each part, label each part, well, we have one, two, three, four. This is one of four parts. This is one of four parts. This is one of four parts. And this is one of four parts. Now, remember, one, two, three, four equals the whole, but they're all their individual pieces. Okay? Now, our denominator total pieces is on the bottom and our numerator is the individual piece which is one on the top. Let's look at a triangle. How many parts make up this triangle? So there's a whole triangle on the outside but how many parts or pieces make up the triangle? Well I count one, two. So what's our fraction? This is one of two pieces and this is one of two pieces. All right. The denominator is 2 because there are 2 total pieces. And the numerator is 1 because this is the one individual piece. Now for this, uh, for this circle, it looks a little bit like a peace sign, doesn't it? Now I actually think Peace Week is coming up here pretty soon. So that is a connection that you guys could do. If you don't know how to draw a peace sign, you just draw a dot in the middle. And you can draw just your lines exactly like this so you have three equal parts now the circle like I just said is made up of three equal parts we have one two three so three equal parts how do we label them well this is one of three parts this is one of three parts and this is one of three parts remember our denominator total amount of parts that make up the whole one two three so denominator is three each piece is its own, so that is one of three parts. All right, now, sometimes with these 3D shapes, we get a little confused. 
Um, if it's printed on a piece of paper, we don't always get to see uh, every single face of the shape because we just can't see through it. We can't see through the paper, but you have to imagine uh, like you got an Amazon box, okay? So if you have an Amazon box, how many sides make up a box? We have one, two, three, four, five, okay? So we have five, six. We actually have six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you have a top and a bottom. That's one, two. And then you have four sides, four faces, okay? So you actually have six faces. Now, if you are to label each face, remember, there are six faces that make up the whole. So there are six faces in all. So our number would be six on the bottom because that's our denominator, the total parts. And each part is one. It's its own, okay? So each face is one-sixth in a box. I'm just going to label one of these sides. Last but not least, boys and girls, we have our money and dollar cent notation, okay? So here's a word problem for you. It says, five minions each bought a stuffed unicorn. Stuffed unicorns cost five cents. How much did the minions pay in all? Hmm. Well, in order to figure this out, I know there are five minions, so I'm going to draw five minions right here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, they each have their own unicorn. So, unicorn, 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 unicorn. So that's five unicorns, okay? Five minions, five unicorns. Now, if each stuffed animal costs five cents, right? This minion paid five cents, this one paid five cents, this one paid five cents, this one paid five cents, and this one paid five cents, okay? How much do the minions pay in all? Well, if I want to know how much they all paid together, I have to put them all together. So five, 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 and five. Let's skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, so 25 cents is what it costs to buy the five unicorns. That is our cent notation. Now, remember dollar cent notation? We want our dollar before the decimal point, which is our and. This means and. So we have our dollar cent is 25 cents equal a dollar? No. So we know that we don't have any dollars. We don't have to say any dollars. So we can say zero dollars and how many cents do we have? 25 cents. So zero dollars and 25 cents is our dollar cent notation. Okay, so now let's continue to do some practice with some money. Okay, money we can have, all right, three nickels, three nickels, two pennies. Let's count them together. Remember, we have to change our count, so we want to put our bigger number at the beginning. Okay, so it doesn't make sense to go 5, 6, 11, 12, 17. It doesn't make sense to go that way. So we need to go 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. 17 cents. Now, we know we have zero dollars, right? Zero dollars and 17 cents. Okay, so going on to the next one. Let's get two dimes and one nickel. We have two dimes, one nickel. I'm going to get those pennies out of there. Now we know that a dime is 10 and a nickel is 5. So let's put our dimes in the front, nickel at the end, so that we can count a little bit easier. Let's count 10, 20. Now don't keep counting by 10s. Remember, 
this as a 5. So we go 10, 20, 25. This is a common mistake that a lot of first graders like to make with money. They'll start going 10, 20, 30, and they get mixed up even though we changed our coin. So we have 10, 20, 25. Now, if we have 25 cents, we know we have zero dollars and 25 cents. Okay, so now let's get out three dimes, one nickel, three pennies, and let's count this. Now, which one's the most? A dime is the most. Let's put our dimes in the front, then nickel, then pennies. Okay, so now remember, again, we do not want to continue counting by tens. We don't want to continue counting by fives. We have to be able to make that change when the coin changes. So we go 10, 20, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 38 cents. All right, now 38 cents doesn't equal a dollar, so we know it's zero dollars. And decimal point is and 38 cents. Last problem, we have four quarters. Okay, four quarters, some of you may already know what it equals, but we're going to do this with some visuals because manipulatives help some of us learn a little bit better. I know I'm a keen aesthetic learner, so I like being involved with my learning and I like to be hands-on with it. I hope you do too, okay? so. Quarters, it's 25 cents. Now we have to count by 25, so we're skip counting by 25s. Now, this might be a tough skill to learn, but the easiest way to learn it is with money, I promise you, because 25 cents um, adds up to a dollar a lot quicker than all those other coins, and you will find that out very quickly as a kid. Okay, so I'm going to count 25, 50, 75, 100. So let's do that again. 25, 50, 75, 100. All right? Okay. So if we broke it up, we could say 50, 50. We know that 50 plus 50 is 100. So 100 cents. Now, how many cents is in a dollar? Correct. 100 cents is in a dollar. So, if we have 100 cents, how many dollars do we have? We have one dollar, and do we have any cents left over? No, our cents were all given to that dollar, so we have no cents left over. So we have or one dollar and zero cents. Okay.